Returning multiple values from a single function call has always been a known problem since the beginning of software engineering. Let's see how to tackle the problem in various C++ standards. Pre-C++11, the only way to return multiple values was by the way of references or pointers. It's the usual C way. For example, we make a function foo, foo, which takes a reference to A, reference to B, assigns one to another. Here we have AB, foo, AB. That's your old school way of returning multiple values from a function. This is somewhat awkward since typically arguments are regarded as inputs rather than output. It gets even more awkward if the function has a getter-like name. For example, let's call it get foo and get foo here. So as you can see, we're calling get foo with two arguments, but there's no output. There's no assignment anywhere. It's really awkward and strange looking. We have a get function which actually doesn't return anything but fills the arguments with return values. Of course, all of this can be made more intuitive by proper naming conventions, but it still leaves this kind of bad aftertaste. Another possibility was returning structs or classes composed of all the information we wish to return to the caller. It helps with ability a lot and it's more intuitive than the previous approach, but introduces another problem. We need a struct for all possible combination of return values. This adds a lot of boilerplate, which is not really needed. It's a workaround for a problem which shouldn't exist in the first place. With large code bases, this can lead to a big mess with tens of structures used only for something as stupid as a container for return values. In C11 and 14, we got some features which help alleviate the issue. Thanks to the introduction of variadic templates and the tuple type, we can create tuples of L-value references. Those references can be bound to, well, let's call them real variables, which should receive our return values. In fact, the standard library contains a helper method just for that, stdtie. Let's see how it works. First, let's get rid of this abomination and this thing. And let's return std tuple with, well, twins, nothing fancy. Return one, two, because why not? And here we no longer call get full with a and b as arguments, but we use std tie a b equals get foo. What std tie does is create a L value reference to its arguments, in our case a and b. So in essence the return of get foo, which is a tuple, gets each of its elements assigned to those arguments passed to std tie. So a and b equals now 1 and 2. You can also use std ignore if you're not interested in one of those values. For example, we're not interested in B. So let's remove B and here use std ignore. And that's it. This really is a step up from the previous approaches. Instead of custom return structures or references or pointers in uh, parameters, we simply leverage tuples and simple references. The end result is a set of variables containing each of the return values. But that's still not perfect. To make it work, you need to define the variables up front here, and they cannot be const. So if you create something like this, well, this, this won't work, obviously. Nope. This really gets cumbersome when someone wishes to use auto-type deduction. This also violates the good practice, the very good practice of making things const by default, and mutable only if needed. Fortunately, C17 introduces one feature which solves all those problems, structured binding declarations. Let's see how it works. Let's see leave our get foo function as it is. It's quite nice, I think. But now, let's remove this thing. 
here. What do you want to assign to the return value of get foo? Let's use those new fancy features. Let's start with auto and then we have square brackets and inside we declare the names of the variables which we want to introduce here. For example, a, b and what it does, it creates a and b variables, it auto deduces the type from the return value of get foo and assigns values to a and b from the elements of our tuple. So after this line, we will have int a and int b. You can think of those as means of deconstructing complex objects. Each name in the declaration gets assigned the value with, like I said, the type automatically deduced, coming from the corresponding member in the assigned from expression. The formal rules might be a bit complex, but the end result is quite intuitive, I promise. Let's see. If assigning from an array, each variable holds the value of subsequent array elements. If assigning from a pair or a tuple, which we have here in our example, each variable holds the value of subsequent tuple elements. And also, if assigning from a structure or a class, each variable holds the value of subsequent non-static public member. Well, let's maybe see that last example to illustrate what's actually happening. Widget, wind, wind, widget, wow, widget, in A, in B, here we are returning widget instead of a tuple, and as you can see, it also works. Let's build it. It builds, it has a warning because we are not using A and B anymore, but nevertheless, it compiles just fine. A gets assigned to the first element of widget, which is also called A, and B also gets the same treatment. You can even use const or references if you want to create and bind a reference. Because right now, in our example here, we are making a copy of the value. So let's see. There's nothing preventing you from using const auto here. So as you can see, we now have const A, const B, which come from our multiple return function call. If we wanted to make a reference, we can also do that. As you can see, it works. Now A and B are references to temporary values. In essence, structure binding declarations are a form of STD tie on steroids. They provide the means of introducing separate variables for multiple return values while avoiding all the negatives of STD tie not to mention the old way of passing by reference and pointers. I strongly advise to use this form as it's the most secure and readable of them all. Hope you found this interesting, hope you found this informative. If you have some questions, leave them down below. If you're not yet subscribed, click the big red button and see you in the next one.